Okay. You are unmuted, right? Awesome. But it should connect, right? Mm -hmm. So. Is this loose? I have no idea. It shouldn't be low. This is flickering. Does anyone have a different adapter for the HDMI I and USB C? Maybe this one worked. I oh. just used it. This one worked a moment ago. If you can plug in. Yeah. Just plug it in here. Yeah, try that. Yeah, oh, cool. So. Just now. Yeah. So. Uh, Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, oh, you're still seeing my screen, right? Uh, how do I change the other screen? Yeah. Your screen share is fine. My screen share. Is yeah, fine. yeah. Just, just. Uh, it's, it's. No, no. Because you're, you're mirroring the screen there. So. Just switch over to um, but yeah. I I didn't want to mirror, but okay. Oh okay, you don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna extend it. Is there a way to do that? Yeah. So uh, display settings. I don't want to mirror. Ah, it's fine, you know. It's okay. fine. Uh, Go to the other uh, The screen share works. Okay. Okay. I don't think Gather is getting the screen share. Uh, it's not? No. Sorry. Right? Not when uh, this is very weird. <laughs> Don't touch gather now. Just, just present. There we go. Now gather has it. I didn't rehearse it without notes, so let's see how this goes. So. Yeah, thanks a lot for uh, attending this talk. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some of the work we did in modeling deep learning applications using graph neural networks. Uh, James, Hugh, and I uh, are at Meta, and James is here as well. So uh, let's motivate, uh, pro let me just provide you some context and motivate the problem. So you have a favorite machine learning model, and now you want to deploy this model on your favorite target hardware. Right? And you want to utilize all the features that this target hardware has. So what you can do is use a compiler framework like Halide and TVM. And you can specify the model you want to implement in this framework. The good thing about Halide and TVM is they actually separate out the specification. It's called a pipeline algorithm depending on the literature you, re you review. And it's, it separates out the uh, a specification from what we call the schedule. And now schedule is essentially how these operations on tensors, which are laid out as loop hierarchies or loop nests, how are they configured? So that's what a schedule is. And typically, when we talk about uh, talk of uh, implementing schedules for a model, we want to search the space of these schedules. And this search space is composed of uh, these uh, operations uh, that we can use to configure a loop nest. How do we want to parallelize the iterations across different processing elements, whether we want to split a loop, 
vectorize or uh, tile a loop to hide memory latency and so on. So this is a very rich implementation space that we are talking about, right? And the output of the scheduling process is your model, where each of these operators, their loop nests are configured according to this particular schedule. Now, the question is, how do we actually craft and generate these schedules? One thing you can do is leverage these domain level expertise, but human written schedules can be hard to maintain. They are intensive. Humans are expensive and they are also error prone. You can one thing you can do is actually uh, follow uh, 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 the auto tune approach, right? And the idea here is you have a schedule search that works in conjunction with executions on native hardware. So you would enumerate schedules, run them on hardware, record the performance metric, and then use that as a guide for this enumeration process. This is great. Auto-tuning can give you high quality schedules. The problem, it is slow, it is expensive. So we are talking about hours of compilation times for these uh, deep learning models. So the, the, the question is, can we do something that gives us the same quality of schedules as an auto-tuning approach, but is lightweight and fast? How about we replace this native hardware execution with a learned performance model for the hardware target that we are interested in? So in this case, the search can actually query this model instead of executing your candidate schedule on hardware and use that, use that as feedback. However, for this to work, you need a high quality uh, performance model that captures a wide range of schedules. And that's where the primary contribution of this work lies, where we propose a novel uh, performance model uh, based on these graph neural networks. So uh, the idea was born of the observation work that uh, these essentially are application graphs, right? And graphs are a natural way to represent these DM models. They are a great abstraction to capture interlayer interoperator relationships and also encode these data dependencies. So we propose a, a graph neural network model for the halide framework, uh, which can actually uh, predict the performance of these schedules implemented in the halide framework. Uh, this is based on the convolution model to capture uh, uh, inter interoperator relationships. And uh, so, so before I describe the model, I just want to give a brief overview of the feature engineering process. And this is, uh, uh, we use the same feature engineering process, so you can actually plug and play the model. Uh, the, the featureization in the Halide Auto Scheduler for a given deep learning pipeline extracts two categories of features. The first set of features are meant to capture the behavior of the computation independent of how it is uh, performed. This can mean capturing the awkward histogram to compute a result, uh, capturing memory access patterns, and so on. The second set of features are schedule dependent, and they try to capture the impact of the scheduling choices made to implement a loop nest that corresponds to an operator. So we can uh, count the number of parallel jobs that we have launched, uh, the vectorization width, unroot factors, and there's a bunch of them. Let's talk about our architecture, and this is based on the graph convolutional framework. This was proposed in 2016. Uh, in this framework, there are two steps. The first step is what we call an aggregation of eight step. In this step, every neighborhood knows something about every node knows something about its neighborhood. Uh, and uh, in order to do that, uh, we take the uh, for every deep learning graph, we derive the initial set of embeddings from the halide auto scheduler, lay them out manner to get our initial embedding matrix, multiply it with a learnable weight matrix, and then finally multiply it with the HSNC matrix, which is normalized, and pass it through a non-linearity. A couple of things to know here. This process is iterative, where we use the current set of embeddings to update the next set. And the consequence of multiplying with that HSNC matrix is every node receives are average of the representations of nodes that have an edge incident on it. And that's how you know something about your neighbors. 
Each aggregate update step is called a convolution. We have two convolution layers in this network. So that means at the end of those convolutions, every node some, knows something about all the nodes that are two jumps away. And we realize these local dependencies are what matter. So after you have uh, 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 done your rounds of convolution, the next step is to read out the entire graph, derive a representation for the entire graph. And this is what we call the polling or readout layer. So we have two convolution layers. We do a sum pool where the final embeddings are summed and we get a feature vector. In addition to that, we also do a sum pool on the initial and the intermediate representations. This is uh, uh, adopted from uh, a graph classification architecture that was proposed in 2018. Finally, this feature vector is passed through a linear layer, and this gives you the runtime of running that model. Let's talk about evaluation. So in order to train this model, we created a random data generator, which gives us, uh, which gave us around 10,000 uh, models. We sampled around 1.6 million schedules from these models. Uh, and uh, uh, we do a comparative evaluation of our model with the existing model used in the halide framework and also the TVM cost model. The existing halide uh, cost model is built using feed forward networks and the TVM cost model uses uh, decision tree ensembles. And our target hardware is the Xeon family of CPUs. Just to provide an overview of the results, so uh, this compares the average prediction error on the test set split of our data set. And as you can see, we significantly improve upon the existing models. In fact, we are about eight times better than the existing halide model and about 12 times better than the existing TBM model. With that, uh, I summarize. So we propose a graph convolution network-based performance model, which is based on the convolution framework. It captures interlayer interactions and, generate, and generates richer representations, which improve our prediction accuracy. We implement this model in PyTorch, train it on a data set of around 1.6 million schedules. And it, since it uses the existing halide feature engineering process, we, it is completely integrated with Halide, and it can predict the quality of Halide schedules. Finally, we demonstrate how using this abstraction, representing these computational graphs in the, in the domain as a graph neural network, can improve uh, accuracy over the baselines that we discussed. Uh, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, are you asking uh, whether we uh, whether we have multiple schedules for the same graph? Oh, they are different. They are entirely different. Yeah, they are different pipelines. Yeah, but we do have multiple schedules that were sampled for the same pipeline as well. But there's no overlap on the pipelines between the training and the test set. Uh, they were sampled from the same uh, distribution, if that's what you're asking, but they are different schedules and pipelines altogether. Uh, are you asking uh, uh, whether we uh, the graph neural network trains slower than the feed forward net of, with the baselines? I'm saying that the time spending on the graph neural training. Oh. Which is the time spent on schedule Oh yeah. I mean, uh, so uh, a couple of things. Uh, uh, training. Uh, this is a one-time thing, right? You train a neural network and then you are done. And as opposed to auto scheduling, every time you want to schedule uh, uh, a new pipeline, you are spending a few hours every time. So at one point, you would break even, I mean, <laughs> depending on the number of times. But this is a one-time offline thing, and then you can deploy it.
Okay, great. Doesn't look like there are questions on Slack. So let's end here. Thanks. Thank you very much.